Now, listeners of this show know that I am often a critic of modern Western civilization. I criticize it not because I hate it or want to leave, but because I love it and plan to stay here until I die and raise my children here, just as my children will raise their own children and so on and so on. What troubles me about our society is the degradation, the moral chaos, the signs of collapse and decay, and that's where I focus my criticisms. But there are others who hate Western civilization for all of the good things about it. They are the authors of the degradation, chaos, and collapse that I just mentioned. They criticize Western civilization because they despise it, just as they despise civilization itself. And that explains the relatively recent rise of the anti-air conditioning movement, which is, of course, an outgrowth of the climate hysteria that has gripped hold of some of the most impressionable and gullible portions of our society. This weekend, an author named Stan Cox submitted another entry into the burgeoning anti-AC genre with an op-ed in the New York Times titled, I swore off air conditioning, and you can too. Well, yes, Stan, we can swear it off, but why in God's name would we want to? That's the question he needs to answer, and let's see if he does. Quote, whenever people ask me how my wife and I have endured 25 Kansas summers, almost entirely without air conditioning, I like to say we do it because air conditioning makes it too hot outside. We're not aesthetics, Luddites, or misers. We just want to keep living comfortably indoors and out. Now, a quick side note here. It's funny that Stan rules out from the start that his anti-AC position is due to him being an ascetic uh, Luddite or miser, because those would all be the only legitimate reasons to not use air conditioning. At least they're the closest thing to legitimate. So if you have decided to practice asceticism and you are swearing off earthly pleasures and physical comforts as part of some kind of... Um, you know, a, a severe spiritual discipline, and you're sweating your ass off in your own living room all summer long as part of that process, well, I can respect that. I'm not coming over to visit, especially not any time between the months of May and October, but I respect your commitment. But those are not the reasons why Stan has rejected his air conditioning unit. Uh, those are rarely the reasons why the anti-AC people reject it. So let's continue. Quote, our bodies have grown so accustomed to climate-controlled indoor spaces set at a chilly 69 degrees that anything else can feel unbearable. And the greenhouse gases created by the roughly 90% of American households that own AC mean that uh, running them even in balmy temperatures is making the climate crisis worse. Our species evolved biologically and culturally under wildly varying climatic conditions, and we haven't lost that ability to adapt. Research suggests that when we spend more time in warm or hot summer weather, we could start feeling comfortable at temperatures that once felt insufferable. To keep us going through the rest of the summer, we rely on electric fans, which consume only about 2% of the energy needed to air condition in one room. They're not only free of the refrigerants that amplify air conditioning's contribution to global warming, they can also save you money. So this is about stopping climate change, as always. This is why Stan and his family willingly choose to live inside an oven. But they do have some alternative methods for keeping cool. He tells us, quote, we also kept other appliances and devices turned off as much as possible because they too generate heat. Dishwashers are trouble, uh, putting out heat and humidity. We don't have one. We can't unplug the refrigerator, of course, but we keep our set for just under 40 degrees, the highest safe temperature, according to the FDA. And we dry our laundry in the clothesline out back. When it gets too hot, we lightly spray water on our arms, legs, and faces. The water helps dissipate a lot of heat. A quick cold shower or a little uh, time spent with that all-American favorite, the lawn sprinkler, also can bring relief. So this is what Stan is reduced to. Spraying himself with a water bottle, like he's a misbehaving cat. Running through the sprinkler just to stave off the heat exhaustion. And to make matters worse, he also deprives himself of a dishwasher and a washing machine. He has rejected, he's rejected perhaps the three greatest household inventions. And he's rejected them for the dumbest imaginable reason. Not like a cool reason, like he's Amish, or even a practical reason, like if he was broke, but for the sake of the climate, the stupidest, lamest, least practical reason of all. Are you still struggling with back taxes or unfiled returns? The IRS is escalating collections by adding 20,000 new agents and sending millions of demand letters. Handling this alone can be a huge mistake and cost you thousands of dollars. In these challenging times, your best offense is with Tax Network USA. With over 14 years of experience, the experts at Tax Network USA have saved clients millions in back taxes, regardless of the size of your tax issue. 
Their expertise is your advantage. Tax Network USA offers three key services, protection, compliance, and settlement. Upon signing up, Tax Network USA will immediately contact the IRS to secure a protection order, ensuring that aggressive collection activities such as garnishments, levies, or property seizures are halted. If you haven't filed in a while, if you need amended returns or are missing records, Tax Network USA's expert tax preparers will update all of your filings to eliminate the risk of IRS enforcement. Then they'll create a settlement strategy to reduce or eliminate your tax debt. The IRS is the largest collection agency in the world, and now that tax season is over, collection season has begun. Tax Network USA can even help with state tax issues. For a complimentary consultation, call today at 1-800-958-1000 or visit their website at tnusa.com slash Walsh. That's 1-800-958-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash Walsh today. Don't let the IRS take advantage of you. Get the help you need with Tax Network USA. Look, I take this sort of thing personally, I admit, because I am a lifelong diehard fan of air conditioning. I am basically the president of air conditioning's fan club. Uh, No pun intended. There are few technological advances in human history that have been as beneficial as air conditioning. It has undoubtedly saved millions of lives over the years. There's actually been studies done on this. For, For instance, in the year 2019 alone, according to one study, air conditioning was responsible for saving nearly 200,000 lives. It's not difficult to see how that would be the case. But even aside from the lives saved, the perhaps less urgent but still profoundly important point is that it makes life markedly more enjoyable for hundreds of millions of people. Few inventions have increased quality of life as significantly as air conditioning has. It's, It's an invention so great that, unlike so many other almost as great inventions, it's nearly impossible to take for granted. So I admit that Uh, Whenever I open my refrigerator or I get into my car, I am not always consciously grateful for the fact that refrigerators and cars exist, even though I am grateful. But every time I walk into an air-conditioned building on a hot day, I always think to myself, my God, I'm so glad air conditioning exists. In fact, the lack of air conditioning is the first reason that I would never want to take a time machine back to the distant past where they didn't have air conditioning. Well, that's the second reason, I guess. The first reason is that time machines don't exist. But the point is that air conditioning is wonderful. And that's exactly why people like Stan, leftists, want to discourage you from using it. This is an ideology committed to making your life more miserable. It actively seeks to remove joy from existence. Now, it does this at deeper and more serious levels, demolishing the family, faith, tradition, national identity, all of these being sources of meaning and therefore fulfillment and therefore happiness. But this agenda is enacted closer to the surface too. Don't eat meat, it says. Uh, Don't own your own home. Don't drive. Don't use gas stoves. Turn off your air conditioning. As I said, if if these forms of self-denial were being recommended as a means of discovering some greater spiritual truth through suffering and deprivation, uh, I could respect it. I wouldn't do it, but I'd respect it. Except that's not what's happening here. This is the worst kind of suffering. This is suffering without meaning, without purpose. Misery for misery's sake. It's like being an ascetic without the asceticism. Instead, it's being replaced with some vague idea that these sacrifices will save the climate or something. But it's not going to do anything for the climate one way or another. And it's not really intended to. This is an anti-human agenda. Environmentalism is just its glossy cover. Underneath all of that is a seething hatred for humanity itself. And that's why Stan really turns off his air conditioning and enjoins you to do the same. And it's why you shouldn't. And it's also why Stan is today canceled. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Wall Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.